Last October, in the quiet Mississippi town of Pascagoula, two local men confronted authorities with a rather bizarre story. Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker told of a strange craft landing near their fishing site and of being taken aboard by three unearthly creatures. The two men were questioned under hypnosis and lie detectors, but their story remained intact. One of the men suffered a nervous breakdown and is still under treatment. Among the skeptics were Ralph and Judy Blum, already at work on a UFO book. With W5 last week, Ralph and Judy returned to Pascagoula. Judy and I stumbled into this book. It, it came to us to be written. Uh, suddenly, we were in a wave of waves. UFOs were being seen across the country again. We were in what they call a flap. And people began experiencing things that they couldn't explain. Something was happening in our skies, in the midst of Watergate, Agnew, the energy crisis, the Middle East. Something was happening, and people couldn't understand what it was. We spoke about UFOs, but nobody really knew. And then, uh, then it hit right here, where we are. It hit Pascagoula. Uh, Charlie Hickson entered the news, and we had a book to write. Something happened October of 73 that would go down in history. The spaceship came with many blue lights, set down near them in the night. Three little men came out and took them inside, they looked him over with one big eye. They say what they saw was the real, they know they were the ones that saw the Pascal UFO. We were sitting on the other side of the pier with our, our feet, you know, over toward the river, fishing in, in the river. And the fish still wasn't biting, so I told Calvin, I said, well, you know, we might as well go home. But I guess I was when I heard it, it was some kind of zipping sound. And when I turned on around in this area out here, about 40 or 50 feet out there, uh, it was some, some kind of craft, you know. It was it looked like it was going to come right onto the ground. But it, it came on down and hovered about, oh, about a foot and a half or, or two feet off of the ground. But we didn't know what to do, you know. I, uh, the river behind us and, and uh, that out there, not knowing what it was. So, and then before we uh, had time to really do anything, it seemed like an open appeared. Uh, and toward the end, it was, you know, toward us. And... The blue light, it had, it had blue flashing lights as it was, you know, approaching the ground, but then they went out, and when the opening appeared, some source of light came from the inside. It was just almost blinding. Sheriff Diamond, can you tell me just what happened that night? No, sir, I can't. All I can tell you is there was two men came into the Sheriff's Department approximately 8.30 and 9 o'clock. They were all excited and upset, wanting to climb the walls, hysterical, crying. That's actually all I know is what happened. As far as me seeing what happened, I don't know. Of course, uh, we could see them in, in, the, in the opening coming from, you know, when it started out to craft. But did I you think it tell. was people coming out at first? Well, they, they had, they had, uh, well, I, I kind of thought it was people at first, you know, off like that. But of course, when they, when they appeared there in, in front of me, um, it was the most shock I've ever had in my life. What, what did you see? Um, well, they, they, they were, they were shorter than me. I'd say about five foot two or three, and they didn't have a neck. They, they had, it seemed to come directly to their shoulders. And they had something uh, that, that came out to a point about where a, a nose would be, and, and on each side, the ears. And I believe that they looked like they were a little longer on the ears than the nose. But still pointed the ears. They were still pointing, yes. But since I was down there, and since I was a physician, and several other scientists and investigators were asked to, to uh, consult and uh, and look into the situation I was asked and if would I mind if I would be present and I said I wouldn't mind at all and while it is still very difficult for us to believe that a that a, a, a spaceship landed and that robot type uh, creatures came out and actually took these two people into into the spaceship these men in, in my opinion believe that they saw this and that they were being honest in reporting what they have reported but it seemed to me when they came out that doorway, or that opening, or whatever it was, then just almost instantly they were right there on us. And uh, their arms, they had arms, it, and I saw the arms moving here and, and in the shoulders. 
but they had web. I mean, their, their fingers were web, and then they had something like a thumb, and they were like this. Mm -hmm. We questioned them at length. And then we left the room and recorded every, every, all the conversation they had. We recorded between the two of them. And one of them kept wanting to pray. And he said, I, after all I went through on this earth, he said, why should I have to see something like this? Calvin Parker, I was questioning him, and at one time he wanted to climb the wall. I saw how nervous and how shook up he was. They had me uh, one on this arm like this, and on the other one, you know, they had my other arm like that. And they just, I just seemed to lift up to the same height they were off the ground, and, and we just moved into the crowd. Now inside, how did they, how did they lay you out? Do you remember how it happened? Uh, yes, uh, they, I didn't see any tables or chairs or anything mm -hmm. in there. I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't in there because the light was almost blinding, but I didn't see any. And when they, when they carried me inside, they seemed to, to just lean me back, you know. And uh, this, this eye, well, I keep referring to it as an eye, and it moved up to, in front of me about this close. Mm -hmm. And it started right at my eyes, looking me right in the eye. Uh -huh. And it seemed, it hesitated there for a, a, a few seconds, and it just started moving over my entire body. When they, they brought me uh, from the craft that, that along this area here, and they seemed to, they didn't drop me, you know, they just released me back to the ground. And uh, I fell, I, I don't know why my, my legs were weak, I don't know why it was the, the fright or what it was, but I, I fell onto the ground. And that's when I seen Calvin, he's standing right over here in this area, and he was standing facing the river with his arms outstretched like that, just like he was staring at something. Can you tell me about the lie detector test? Well, so that was run by Pilkington. Was it Pilkington? Uh, Pennington. Pennington. That they run this type of test about six times a day. And when they were asked to come over here to, to talk to these people, they had in their mind that they it was just a big joke. And if I understand it correctly, they ran one test on Mr. Hickson, the machine showed that he was telling the truth. Then they run another one. And then the examiner, he began to wonder himself. So he ran the third test, and he believed just what Mr. Hickson had told him. Mr. Booth, tell me what happened that night in October. Well, I got up and come, had turned off the TV and come to the front door, which you can see right behind me. Just as usual, checking to see if it was locked. So I looked out the window at the top, and naturally I saw this object above the street light out there. So naturally it caught my eye where the lights was on it. Couldn't hear any racket or anything. So I opened the door after a few seconds to step out to see if I could really tell what it was. It just took off. Can you describe it? Well, it was round had lights all the way around it, turning in a counter clockwise motion. It had a dome on top with a bright light shining out through the top of it. To tell the actual figure of it or anything, you couldn't tell. You could just see the lights and the one on top. When it happened to Charlie, the creatures, whatever they were, didn't communicate with him. Now, it's enough to say you saw a UFO to, to give you trouble these days in some towns. To be taken aboard is, is, is just a suspect idea. But somehow, if the creatures don't give you a message, you're just a touch less incredible. And Charlie says that what he said and what we wrote about in the book, uh, they, it was like they had a job to do and they came and they did it. I think there has to be a reason why that uh, Calvin and me was picked. Maybe because you could take it? Well, it might be. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think that they, they know more of what's going on down here on this earth than we think. And I don't know. They might have been, you might say, looking for somebody that, uh, that could, uh, that could, you might say, hold up under the strain and, uh, and convince people that, that, uh, that that there is another world and there's some kind of life on that world up there. They were the ones that saw the fascicle of UFO.
That's our program for this week. W5 will not be seen next week. We're going to repeat CTV's prize-winning inquiry on wiretapping in Canada, Hear No Evil. We'll be back on the 16th of June with a special wrapping up the federal election campaign to that date. On behalf of Carol Taylor and the entire W5 staff, I'm Bruce Phillips. Good night. Thank you.